set of the double integral where r is the region bounded by the triangle with vertices at 0, 3, 1, 1, and 5, 3. So the first thing that we want to do here is sketch ourselves a graph of this region. So we have our y-axis and our x-axis. Let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so let's start by plotting these ordered pairs. So we have a point at 0, 3. We have a point at 1, 1, or vertice at 1, 1. And then we also have a vertice at 5, 3. And so by connecting these vertices, we see our region of integration, the triangle with vertices at these points. So we're shading our region of integration here. This is R. So in order to set up this double integral, we need to define the curves that bound this region. So we have curve number one, we have curve number two, and curve number three. So that's what we're going to do now. Define the bounding curves or the bounding lines. So our first line is easy enough. We have a horizontal line here at 3. So we can label our first curve y sub 1 is the horizontal line y equals 3. And our second curve here, y sub 2, we're going to need to find the equation of the line with endpoints at 5, 3, and 1, 1. So we'll find the slope. So we have the change in the y by the change in the x. So 3 minus 1 over 5 minus 1 leaves us with 2 fourths, or 1 half. And then we want to use this slope in one of our points to find the equation of the line. So we say y equals mx plus b. And I'm going to choose the smaller of the two points. So we have y is 1, our slope is 1 half, x is 1. And we want to use this to solve for our y-intercept b. And so solving for b here, we see that we are left with 1 half. So our second bounding curve, our bounding line, is the line 1 half x plus 1 half. And then last but not least, we want to find the equation for our third bounding line here, y sub 3. And this one's nice since it intersects the y-intercept here. We know that b will be 3. And then we'll use these given points to help us find the slope. So the slope of this line, we can say, is 3 minus 1 all over 0 minus 1, which leaves us with negative 2. And we can see, since we have a y-intercept at 3, b is 3, and that third bounding line, y sub 3, is defined as minus 2x plus 3. So now what we want to do is define the bounds on this region. We need to determine if we are going to integrate with respect to the order dy dx or dx dy. So we need to choose the order of integration. Now both will work, but we want to see is one going to be easier than the other? So let's say, for example, we wanted to use the order dy dx. So we'll consider dy dx first. So that means that we will draw a cross section parallel to the y axis. So notice here, if we were to put our cross section, our x value, say x naught here, and we draw our cross section on this region, we can see that the top curve is y sub 1 and the bottom curve is y sub 3. However, if I put my cross section over here, notice that the bottom curve is changing. Right? In this case, the bottom curve is y sub 2. So this would need the sum of two double integrals, 
which is doable, but if we can avoid the extra work, we want to try to. So just in case you decide to use the order dy dx, you're going to have to think about this in two cases. Case one, we can see from our graph that when x, or we can even use our inequality notation, we can say that if x is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 1, then y is going to be greater than or equal to y sub 3, less than or equal to y sub 1. And again, we're using, I should label these down here, so we have this is y sub 1, y sub 2, y sub 3. So we can fill those in here. And we can say that y is greater than or equal to minus 2x plus 3, but it's less than or equal to 3. However, if we're thinking about the x values where x is greater than or equal to 1, less than or equal to 5, then we can see that y is going to be greater than or equal to y sub 2, less than or equal to y sub 1. And so plugging in our bounding lines here, we have y is greater than or equal to 1 half x plus 1 half, less than or equal to 3. So these are the two distinct regions that we need, because again, we're going to need to set up two distinct double integrals here. So we might as well go all the way through since we have everything. So we want to set up the double integral, or the sum of the two double integrals. And so again, we were given right off the bat that we had this arbitrary double integral over r of f of x, y, dA. So again, we're using the order dy dx here. So we have our first integral, and this is over the x values 0 to 1, and the inner integral, our y values, are minus 2x plus 3 to 3 of f of x, y, dy, dx, plus the double integral, where our outer integral is from 1 to 5, and our inner integral here is from minus 1 half x plus 1 half, all the way to 3, f of x, y, dy, dx. So here, using the order of dy, dx, we have the sum of two pieces, or two double integrals, to get that full region. But when you have something like this, again, Ed, the sum of two integrals is enough work. The sum of two double integrals is a lot of work. So there's an easier method here if we switch if we rewrite and switch our order of integration. So let's take a look. So let's now go ahead and we'll consider reversing the order of integration and considering the order dx dy. And so to do this, we wanna go ahead and draw ourselves a cross section for an arbitrary y value that's parallel to the x axis. And notice here, no matter where we place this cross section, this horizontal cross section here, we see that the right hand side and left hand side curves remain the same. So we can see that our right hand side curve is always 1 half x plus 1 half and our left hand side curve here is always going to be negative 2x plus 3. So this order only requires one double integral. You just want to be careful here since we're switching our order we're going to need to solve each one of these left each one of these bounding lines for x. So here we go. And this is for our y values on the closed interval 1 to 3, or equivalently if we want to write this as an inequality. This is when y is greater than or equal to 1, less than or equal to 3. We have the following. We have our left-hand side curve, which we have defined as y is equal to minus 2x plus 3, but we want to solve this for x. So we can rewrite this as minus 2x is equal to y minus 3, and then going ahead here and dividing both sides by minus 2, we have that x is equal to negative 1 half times y minus 3, 
and doing the same thing for our right hand side curve, we have given, or we found it to be, 1 half x plus 1 half. So we can say that's 1 half multiplied by x plus 1. And again, we want to solve this for x. So this is equivalent to x plus 1 is equal to 2y. And then solving for x, we are left with x is equal to 2y minus 1. So we're using equivalent forms of our defined lines. And we're ready to go. So we can say that our region R here is defined as the set of all ordered pairs x, y, where x is greater than or equal to negative 1 half y minus 3, less than or equal to 2y minus 1, and then we have that y is greater than or equal to 1, less than or equal to 3. And we can set up the double integral. Again, this was given to us as the generalized double integral over r of f of x, y, dA. And so here we are using the order dx, dy. So our outer bounds are the constants. This is the bounds for y, 1 to 3. The inner integral is the bounds on x. So I have negative 1 half multiplied by y minus 3 all the way to 2y minus 1 of f of x, y dx dy. And so while this order of integration requires us to rewrite the equations, we only have the one double integral here, which will be less work.